Hello everyone, we're halfway through the work week and I'm officially about 10 weeks into my NutriSense program, my NutriSense journey in entirety. Week 10 has been a return to routine and normality for me. I'm fully moved in and back to normal, which is fantastic. So if you're joining the series just now, I really encourage you to go back to the beginning and watch the past videos just so you can get caught up. The reason being is that there's a lot to catch up on and factor in as we continue through the last month of this documentation of my health journey while using the NutriSense program and wearing CGM daily. The last two months have been all about establishing new habits and a new routine. Then integrating those with new habits and routines into my daily life and long-term schedules. Then we'll move, we moved on to self-regulation and habitual choices in my daily life. And now we've reached an amazing stage of what I like to call experimentation. So not only have I managed to create new habits and lifestyles in the last 10 weeks, but I've also realized and understood that all of these changes have been easily integrated into everyday social situations and into holiday traditions and even birthdays. So far, I've continued to steadily lose weight, which is one of my most important goals. So for instance, last week, I lost another two pounds. I'm back to following my four times a week Peloton exercise program, and I'm back to cooking more regularly now that I have my kitchen set up again. Moving forward, I'm gonna start to experiment and change things up now that I've discovered what my body and glucose levels react well or poorly with. I had a great conversation with Carly, the fantastic NutriSense dietitian that I've been working with, about how I can to begin to experiment and refine these things in my diet and exercise to continue to improve my glucose levels and general wellness. Thus far, Carly and I have worked on four things. One, we worked on my meal timing. My body has more trouble breaking down glucose later at night. I can eat the same meal for dinner, but when I eat it earlier in the day, say for lunch, my body breaks down glucose better. Number two, we worked on movement. From my experimentation, I've learned that movement, even a short walk before and after meals, like taking the dog around the block, makes a huge difference in my glucose levels around that meal. So for instance, it'll actually not have as high of a peak and actually recover much better. Number three, I learned what alcohol my body processes better when I'm out and about and in social settings. So for example, beer's not my thing, both taste-wise and on top of that glucose, but tequila is, which is fantastic because uh, I love tequila with a little bit of fresh lime. And number four, Carly helped me learn how to sequence my meals. This means prioritizing vegetables and proteins before carbs and sugars to help your body feel fuller and break down carbs better. All those experimentations have really helped me to figure out what habits and foods are best for my health. For the last couple of weeks of this program, I'm gonna experiment with Carly's next set of experiments to refine my new and healthier habits. Here's a list of experiments that we're gonna delve into. Number one, the 30 gram carb experiment. Everyone has a unique response to carbs and then it's supposed to be to help you discover what yours are. This is basically trying different types of carbs in different times of the day and seeing how it actually affects your blood glucose levels, which I'm really interested to see. Number two, eating raw foods or versus processed foods and examining the data from your CGM. For example, trying raw versus steel cut oats and seeing what the peak in the recovery looks like. Not too fond of this. I do I do prefer uh, normal uh, normal oats and not I'm not a big fan of steel cut oats, but let's see what happens. Number three, trying a carb by itself and then trying another time paired with a protein or vegetable. So this is a little bit of something that I've already been doing with sequencing, but I'm really interested to see just by itself and how much of a difference it actually can show. And I'll make sure to show everyone as well in the next video. Number four, trying resistant cooked and then cooled food versus freshly prepared starches. So best way to think about this is freshly cooked mashed potatoes versus mashed potatoes that have been cooked and then put in the refrigerator. Let's see how the glucose changes then. Number five, trying different vitamins and health foods, and then examining glucose levels. I can tell you I am not the biggest fan of health foods. I don't necessarily think they taste the great, but I am honestly kind of curious and I want to see what they actually do to my glucose levels. Because remember, everyone is different. Let's see if it, you know, stabilizes mine or if I have huge spikes. Number six, comparing how your body processes different versions of food. For example, berries in the raw form versus berries in a smoothie. Number seven, experimenting with different types of exercise regimens and seeing how they affect my glucose levels. Right now, I'm basically using the Peloton four times a week and that's it. Um, Carly would really be interested to see what happens to my glucose if I start doing weight training, which I've always been interested in and I do have a gym where I live, so time to, uh, time to see how that works out. And eight, last but not least, fasting. 
Shortening and lengthening your eating window can alter your glucose values. Experimenting with short-term fasting at different parts of the day can be super beneficial to certain body chemistry's reactions. So maybe fasting works for me, maybe it doesn't. One thing about me is I have a coffee in the morning and basically it. So maybe breaking that overnight fast isn't the best to do with coffee. Maybe my body would react to something better like oatmeal or maybe some bacon and eggs. Who knows, but I'm, I'm looking to find out. So all of these experiments can help you discover what your body works what best with. And this is the whole point about the NutriSense program. In this last phase of documentation, I'm beginning to experiment some of these things and then narrow down what will help my body run most efficiently. I'll go into more detail in my written blog with these experiments and I'll include the data collected and the meals eaten from last week. I click the link below to get more data and detail and don't forget to check back in next week. And if you'd like to join me on my NutriSense journey, click through through the link. There is a referral code and you get to save some money and you also get to see what type of food works best for you. Until next week, have a wonderful week and uh, bye now. <laughs>